second video on probability. This video here we're going to look at tree diagrams. Tree diagrams are a really, really helpful way of looking at uh, events happening one after the other. So um, let's have a look at this example here first. We've got a couple to look at. In this one we've got five chocolates left in a box all looking the same. Three are raspberry creams and two are nougars. Okay, so we're going to take two chocolates out at random now. You could take those two chocolates at the same time, but in your mind, think of this as taking one chocolate, then taking another chocolate. It'll be easier to think of it like that. Once we've got our true diagram, we'll be able to answer all these questions here. What's the probability we get two nougars? The first is raspberry, the second nougat, or the probability we get one of each type. And that last one there implies that the order doesn't matter. Okay, let's look at the tree diagram for this one. So for our first chocolate that we choose out, we've got two branches. It can be either R or N. Okay, raspberry or nougat. So three of the five chocolates are raspberry, so there's a three-fifths chance of getting a raspberry out. Two of the five chocolates are nougat, so there's a two-fifths chance of getting a nougat. Notice straight away that we write the outcomes at the end of the branch and we write the probabilities next to the branches here. Notice also that these two probabilities on any given branch must add up to one because either this is happening or this is happening. Okay, second chocolate. Now, what's the probability of getting the second chocolate being a raspberry? Well, we've now only got four chocolates left. We've taken a raspberry out, so that means we have two raspberries left out of the four chocolates. So two out of four would be the probability of getting there. So you need to keep that in mind. So the probability of getting a nougat, we don't have to go through any calculations, that's also going to be two out of four or a half. You can simplify those probabilities. Now this branch here, what's the probability of getting a raspberry if the first chocolate we chose was a nougat? Okay, we've now got four chocolates left. The first one was a nougat, that means we've still got three raspberries left. So three out of the four are raspberry, so that probability is three quarters. Again, the last branch, we don't have to do any calculations, that's got to be one quarter, because each branch, the probability adds to one. Great! Next thing we need to know, to get the probabilities at the end of the branches, we multiply. Okay. So the probability of getting two raspberries in a row, multiply, three-fifths times two over four, or a half, is six out of 20, which can be simplified to three out of 10, but we'll just leave it like that for now. Second branch, three-fifths times two out of four is, again, six out of 20. Two-fifths times three-quarters for the next branch, six out of 20. And the last branch is gonna be two out of 20. And yes, we can simplify all of those. Okay, just check that these four probabilities at the end add to one, and indeed they do. Six plus six plus six plus two is 20 out of 20. Okay, let's answer the questions. What's the probability that both are nougat? That's the bottom row here, that's two out of 20 or one tenth. Or you could also write 0.1, that would be just just as accurate. Uh, the first is a raspberry and the second nougat. That's this branch here. First raspberry, second nougat. That's six out of 20, or three tenths, or 0.3. And the last one, what's the probability? There's one of each type. Okay, so that's this branch here, raspberry and nougat, or it's this branch here, nougat, then raspberry. So what do we do with these two probabilities? Okay, hopefully if you remember this from last year, you've got to add these two probabilities together. So that branch or that branch. Okay, so add those two branches together, gives us 12 out of 20, which simplifies to 3 fifths or 0 0.6. So just emphasizing again, to get the probabilities at the end of the branches we multiply, to get the probabilities at if we want more than one probability at the end, we add the probabilities. Okay, so here's an example of a football team. Plays 60% of their games at home. When they play at home, they win 80% of their games. 
but 50% of their games they win when they're playing away. So here's the tree diagram. You can see when they're at home they win 80% of their games. When they're away they only win 50% of their games. Now I've got on here, it's important to realise that if these two events, playing at home and winning, were independent, these two probabilities would be the same. It wouldn't matter if you were playing at home or away, the probability of winning a game would be the same. So straight away I know these two events aren't independent. Okay, what's the probability that we win any given game? Well, that's the top branch, and it's this branch here. So 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 is the probability we're at home and we won. 0 0.4 times 0 0.5 is the probability we were away and we won. So 0 0.68 altogether. Here's the proof that they're not independent. So the probability that you're home and you won, that's 0 0.6 times 0 0.8. Probability that we're at home, we're told, is 0.6. Probability that we've won, we've just worked that out, 0.68. That does not equal that, so these two events are not independent. One more example of a probability tree that's a little bit more interesting. We've got a guy who's looking for a parking space in a car park. Every time he goes around, he has a 75% chance of finding a space. We want to know the probability that it will take two or three times around the car park to find a space. Now notice this probability tree goes on forever. It's a little bit different. If he's unlucky, he has to keep going round again and again and again. You see that any given turn around, he's got a three quarters chance, 75%, 0.75, three quarters chance of finding a space and a quarter chance of not finding a space, represented by S dash. So yeah, this could go on forever, but we want to know the probability that it takes him two or three times. So the probability it takes him two times means that he misses out the first time, but he gets a park on the second time. So a quarter times three quarters. The probability it takes him three times to find a park, that means he misses out the first two times, then he finds a park on the third one. A quarter times a quarter times three quarters, just following the branches along. Getting your calculator out, the probability is 15 over 64.